Have you ever noticed when something becomes popular, a bunch of copycats or knockoffs started to show up? Me neither. After Webkins became a sleeper hit in 2006 with their line of plushies and online game, rival plushie brands started to play catch-up in order to cash in on the new Toys to Life trend. While Webkins is still around and recently started selling plushies again, some of the ripoff brands have been lost to time or are being preserved by dedicated fans so that others can play it. I was one of Webkins' 6 million users back in 2007, so I didn't really know about most of these brands that I'm going to talk about today. So let's take a look at the brands that didn't last. Please keep in mind I'm saying ripoffs and that they were similar to Webkins and they were around the same time that Webkins was popular. I'm not saying these sites or these games are inferior or the toys are inferior, just that they were less popular in the American Midwest where I grew up. Hello everybody, the name is Ari and this is a look back on Webkins ripoffs. No list of Webkin's ripoffs would be complete without mentioning Shining Stars. If you grew up with Webkin's like me, odds are that you've heard of Shining Stars or at least saw the ads playing on TV. No joke, when I was a kid, when I first saw the ad on TV, I went to my mom saying, Mom, they're copying Webkin's. As a kid, I just couldn't believe it. Some brand copying off the other brand that I made my entire personality for a couple of years. I had all of the Webkin's merchandise. I had the clothes, the jewelry, the trading cards, every single gimmick that they came out with, I had. As a member of my school's Webkin's club, I was insulted that some company was copying them. Shining Stars was created by Russ Berry, which was basically a company like Hallmark. They made items that you'd buy for last minute gifts at the checkout aisle. They made stuff like dolls and picture frames, but they were most known for their plushies and for making the original troll dolls. So Shining Stars was just a no-brainer for them to make. I wasn't able to find any information about if Shining Stars sold well at the time, but I did find an article at the time where they did say that Shining Star sales did go up in response to the 2007 Webkin shortage. So it seems that Shining Stars is basically treated as an alternative for people who couldn't find Webkins because they were sold out everywhere. The main gimmick for Shining Stars was that if you bought one, you were able to name a star through the International Star Registry and be able to print off a certificate and chart showing where the star is. And like Webkins, you had a code to play with your plushie in the online game. There were different areas to play in, like Beach World, Snow World, and Space World. Since information on Shining Stars has been lost to time, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a lot of information about the game apart from a development promo video and a short video comparing the game to Webkins. In a parents forum I found, the general consensus on Shining Stars was that the plushies themselves were fine, but the game didn't have as much to it as Webkins. According to them, their kids just wanted to name a star and then never went back on the site. It's obviously not what everyone thought of them at the time, but this was the only thing I could find talking about it. Although Shining Stars had its own dedicated audience of players, the site was made around the end of the company's life. In April 2011, Rustberry filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy, and the site soon shut down after. Players were with the message explaining that the site will no longer be supported, but that Shining Stars will be coming back soon. However, that never came to fruition, and now when you try to go to ShiningStars.com, the link is dead. As for the plushie itself, compared to having an embroidered logo on their feet like Webkin's, Shining Stars instead have a plastic star on their foot with embroidered swirls. Compared to my Webkin's lion, the Shining Stars lion has a bow tie and is made of a softer material. My Webkin's lion Mufasa has beads in his feet so that he can sit still on the table, while the Shining Star lion can't really sit up that well. But I do prefer the design of the Shining Star, so if I'm just comparing the lions, I would have preferred the Shining Star's lion instead of Mufasa as a toy. But it's not really surprising since Russ was known for their plushie gifts. Although the site is no longer with us, I was able to find this plushie for under 20 bucks on eBay. So if you want a piece of lost media, they're readily available. <laughs> Next we have Beanie Babies 2.0. Beanie Babies 2.0 came out in 2008, and it was a spin-off of the original Beanie Babies by Ty. Like the original Beanie Babies, the plushies were made of the same material and were filled with the same plastic beans. Also, like the original Beanie Babies, they all had a heart-shaped tag with their name, birthday, and a poem. For example, I have Pico the Chihuahua, and here's his poem. There's just so much to do and see. Good thing I've got such energy. Come on with me and don't delay. We'll have fun each and every day. And since it was a Webkin's clone, it had a logo on it, but instead it had a plastic button on its butt. I do like the pink fur on him. It makes it look like he's wearing a scarf. I remember seeing these at the store, but the bug eyes really freaked me out. I grew up with Beanie Babies, so the change in design really threw me off. My mom wasn't impressed with the design either, so we just brushed it off as another Webkin's clone. 
Anyway, when you redeemed your Beanie Babies tag code, you had access to the Beanie Babies website, which was a bit like Club Penguin. Like Shining Stars, it was very difficult to find a lot of information from those who played on the site. I did find a video by L Supersonic Q where he talks about his own experience with the site, and he found the game to be pretty average. My brother bought one of the plushes, so I'd watch along as he played, and from what I remember, it was kinda cool, but not quite to the level of Webkin's. However, in my opinion, the site failed because it was trying to copy Webkins without understanding the appeal. When you buy a Webkins, you can choose their name and their gender. It allowed people like me to feel like the plushies had a life outside of the game. The ability to customize their clothes and their rooms just added to the immersion of playing with them. You could play games in Webkins, but you also had to make sure your Webkins was healthy. You had to feed them, give them medicine if they were sick, and make sure they were getting enough sleep. Webkins made you feel like your Webkins was a Tamagotchi, where you had to take care of them, and it made for a better experience while playing. According to L Supersonic Q, the site did have a bunch of mini-games and similar mechanics to the Webkins site. And the site did update to have more customization, but the site decided to change to a 3D design instead of keeping with the 2D design for the avatars. For me, the avatars don't look very appealing as opposed to the more cartoony 2D design of Webkin's avatars. The 3D at the time just wasn't up to snuff. They were trying to be like Webkin's instead of trying to do their own thing. Ty did keep the site going for a few years until 2013 when they announced that they were shutting down the site. And to this day, Ty is still making plushies, but now they moved on to Squishmallow clones. Rescue pets are now on the internet just as cuddly as before. He's so cute. But now, his secret code gets you into their computer world. Rescue Pets My E-Pets was a spin-off of the Rescue Pets toys that was released in 2007. Rescue Pets was a line of toys created by MGA, who makes the Bratz dolls. Like Webkins, they had a code attached to them and the code gave you access to the site. The site allowed you to customize their room and clothes, and you had to take care of them just like Webkins. You had to groom them, take them to the doctor, feed them, and play games in the arcade to earn credits and buy items. They started out with dogs, but then MGA added more animals like monkeys and cows. There was a 3D version called My E-Pets 3D, but according to this parent's video, the game was poorly put together. You had to download the game instead of it being hosted online, and the game barely worked, if at all. Here I am trying to explore the town. Although there's nothing to do in the town, all you get to do is just walk around using the arrow keys. You can't go into any of the houses. There's nowhere to shop. There's nothing to do. The pet is about the same size as Mufasa. It has its embroidered logo on its butt instead of on its paws. It's really top heavy and its head droops to the side. I don't really like the eyes. It makes the dog look really sad, but I think it's like that so you want to buy it. Like when you see a dog begging for food. I like the collar on it. It really sells the fact that they're rescue pets and you're their new owner. It's a nice size for a kid to hold in their hands. I don't like that the front paws are sewn together though. I like when all the legs are able to move so you can pose them. It's okay, but it's not my favorite design. I could find a definitive date of when MGA shut down the site, but the Wayback Machine shows the site working at least up to May 2012. I couldn't find a reason for why the site was shut down, but my guess is that there weren't enough people playing to justify keeping the site going. It was a shock for a lot of people to see their beloved site shut down. When I looked through the comments of the old videos about my e-pets, there are a lot of people who miss the game and wanted to come back. It has its own dedicated fan base and there are a lot of people who want to bring the site back. So MGA, if you still have the assets, bring the game back so other people People can play it. Webkins is still up and thriving, so bring back my e pets. In the littlest pet shop world, there's big, big news! LPSO! <laughs> At Littlest Pet Shop Online, there's a whole new world of fun to explore! <laughs> Little's Pet Shop Online, or LPSO, is a spinoff of Hasbro's Little's Pet Shop Toys. The site was released in September 2009 and was made in collaboration with EA and Freema Studios. Freema Studios previously made a game for another plushie brand, and EA already developed a Little's Pet Shop video game, so it was inevitable that Hasbro would want to compete with Webkins. Compared to Webkins, Little's Pets have their iconic big head and small body. I bought the penguin pet for this video, and I'm actually pretty impressed with the design. It has a good amount of stuffing, which makes it really fun to square. I like that it looks like the penguin is wearing a frilly shirt. I like that he's smiling instead of the rescue pet where it just looked really sad. It feels like there's a thick plastic tube in its neck and it acts as a counterweight so he can stand on his own. Instead of an embroidered logo like most of the plushies so far, all of the plushies have a tush tag. It's an elastic ribbon that has the pet's code printed on it. I actually like that the code is sewn into the plush because it makes the plush feel more unique. I also like to pull on the tush tag and fidget with it. So Hasbro put a lot of thought in their plushie design. 
But what about the site itself? Like the other sites I've discussed, it was similar to Webkins and Club Penguin where you played with your pet and went to different environments to buy food, play games to earn credit, chat with friends, and more. However, the main feature in the game was the huge amount of customization in the game. You could change your pet's colors, accessories, their house, and more. It seemed to resemble The Sims in that way. Like most EA games, EA just couldn't help themselves and LPSO was made free to play. If you were deemed a code for your pet, you would get access to the premium features like more customization and access to exclusive items, but it would only be for a 30-day trial. Then you'd have to pay $6.95 a month to keep the premium membership or buy a 3, 6, or 12-month membership. If I were a kid, my mom would have been pissed when you had to pay for a membership while you can just go on Webkins for free with the price of just one plush. This just reminds me of when EA took a bunch of features from Sims 3 and put it behind DLCs in Sims 4. It ruins the longevity of the game, and it makes it so you have to pay to get the full gaming experience. Why would people want to pay to play the game when there's a much cheaper alternative with more to do? Unsurprisingly, the game shut down on December 1st, 2011, after less than two years. In a video I found showing the site's newsletter, LPSO stated that they were shutting down in order to focus on future games. So either there must not have been enough players, or EA just wasn't able to get kids to pay the ridiculous subscription. Information on this game is surprisingly scarce, so I want to give a shout out to the Lost Media Wiki for helping me with my research for this video. Fans of the LPSO game are actually working to bring the site back for those who want to play it. LPSO Revived is working on remaking the game, and they currently have a demo available showing what they've made so far. It's only for Windows right now, so I wasn't able to get any footage of the demo for this video. They're currently documenting their progress on Discord, and there are fans making and submitting their own assets that might be added to the game right now. So if you're an LPSO fan and you want to play the demo, I have the Discord link for LPSO Revived in the description. Now for that other game that Freema Studios developed, we have one last site to talk about. Welcome to build a bear -Ville, a world stuffed with fun. Bring your furry friends to life online and play together. Finally, let's talk about build a bear -Ville. Build a Bear Vill was the game created for Build a Bear Workshop in December 2007. I actually had two Build a Bears growing up, but I bought one of them before the game came out, so Hardy Marty was in the game all by herself. Lonely. I didn't play the game nearly as much as Webkin since I had a lot more Webkins, and my mom hated Build a Bear Workshop. She hated how much more expensive it was and how they talked you into buying a whole wardrobe for your bears, so I didn't play this game a lot. Compared to the other brands, Build a Bear didn't change the plushies at all for Build a Bear Vill. There weren't any embroidered logos or download tags. They all had the same exact designs, but they just added a download code on the birth certificate when you bought them. Kids already had the experience of picking out their bear and stuffing them with a heart and buying accessories for them, so the download codes were just treated as a bonus. The clothes that you bought for your bear also came with a download code for the game. Webkins had a similar gimmick as well, where you bought clothes for your Webkins and you had a code for them in the game. Here's Dasher with his outfit. You can tell Webkins might have taken some inspiration from Build-A-Bear. As for the site, it was pretty much like the other sites where it was like Club Penguin. There were many games to earn credits, you could chat with friends, you could explore a bunch of different areas, and your furry friend had a home that you could customize. Bearville appears to have lasted the longest. Since the game lasted for a while, there are a lot of videos showing off what the game looked like back in the day. The site lasted for about seven years until the company decided to shut it down in 2015. I couldn't find a reason why, but they must have shut it down because there wasn't enough players to justify keeping it open. All that I could find with the Wayback Machine was a short statement saying that Bearville is being shut down in order to make room for their new site. Build-A-Bearville was replaced with a game section on the main Build-A-Bear website. There were just some mini games and nothing else. Currently, there's a team of developers remaking the game called Bearville Rewritten, and there's a playable demo available right now for Mac and Windows. I played the demo and it's pretty bare bones right now, but two of the mini games are playable. I tried the run for the stuffing game and it played really well. It looks exactly like the game from back then. If you'd like to play the game and support the developers, I left a link in the description. Quick little side note, I found something really weird while researching for this video. If you go to bearville.com, it appears to be owned by a Slovak company since the web designer is written in Slovak. It has screenshots of the original game, but there isn't any Build-A-Bear Workshop branding on it. So this company is trying to scam people into thinking it's the original game by using quotes from executives that worked at Build-A-Bear at the time, and screenshots from the game. I don't know who they think they're fooling, but I just found it interesting. Even if the companies themselves might have seen these as failures compared to Webkin's, there are a lot of people who spent their childhoods enjoying these plushies and the games that were made for them. Although these all were created during the height of the whole Webkin's phenomenon, all of these sites grew into their own special communities of dedicated players. Although I didn't personally grow up with these brands, it's heartwarming to see how much these sites and plushies meant to other people. It's disappointing that all of these sites are no longer around, while Webkin's is still around and thriving. If I ever feel nostalgic and want to play Webkin's again, I can just play 
Webkin's Classic again. I even bought a few of the new Webkin's plushies so I can start playing it again, while other people only have their memories of what all these sites were like and the amount of hours they've spent playing with them. I wish that all of these brands believed in their games like Gans did for Webkin's. While I was researching for this video, I found countless posts and comments about how much people miss all of these sites. All of these sites might have been created in order to compete with Webkin's, but it didn't matter for most people. They just wanted to play games and hang out with the friends they've made on these sites. So it doesn't matter if these are technically ripoffs. These are pieces of history that need to be preserved. And I commend all of those people who are trying to keep those memories alive. Thanks everybody for watching. I know this wasn't a comprehensive list. There's probably other brands that weren't around when I grew up or weren't available in the US. So if there were any I missed, let me know in the comments. If any of you guys have played these games, let me know in the comments as well. Anyways, this has been Ari. See you guys next time.